All the refugees in South Sudan are suffering tremendously. They're victims of an unjust war. They're victims of bombings. They're victims of horrible, horrible things that we can't even, we can't even begin to imagine. And I think the number one thing that we can do is just try to remember these people in our prayers and our support, just to understand that these people are children of God, just like we are. Samaritan's Purse is currently working in two camps that are just south of the border of Blue Nile State. Uh, the one camp is called Jamam Camp. Uh, it has around 40,000 people. Second camp is Doro Camp with about 52,000 people. The Antonov bombings and attacks from North Sudan uh, forced refugees in Blue Nile and Southern Kordofan to flee to these areas. As the bombings still continue even today, more and more people are coming and crossing the border every day. These camps continue to grow by the hundreds, even by the thousands weekly, because the people aren't safe to stay in their homes. We're just really trying to meet people's basic needs. Uh, the basic need of healthcare, basic need of water, basic need of food. People come here across the border, many of them have walked for days on end, and they don't have these basic needs met. We were able to partner with World Food Program, and now Samaritan's Purse is able to distribute food to refugees in both camps. Right now, we're giving food to an average of about 90,000 people every single month. That number is rising per day as the fighting continues and more and more refugees are showing up here. We distribute a monthly ration of food. So for each, uh, for each household, we give them enough food for a, a one month supply. That allows us to do the food distributions once a month. The food that we're distributing, we give them 50 kg or 110 pound bags. Um, we give them nine bags of sorghum or maize. Uh, it's like a cornmeal. Also in one 50 kg bag of beans. Uh, and also cooking oil. In all the projects we do, especially here with the food distribution, we try to employ local refugees, especially the men, to come here so they can have a job, they can make an income, they can support their families here in the camp. We're operating a hospital that was originally built by the Ministry of Health, but when we arrived here, the hospital was abandoned. Samaritan's Purse was able to move into that hospital, rehabilitate it, and now we're providing medical services outside of that hospital. We've hired around 40 medical staff, as well as several expat staff, including a Sudanese surgeon. We're able to provide surgical capacity to all the refugee community. Actually, I'm the only doctor here now. We need the help in terms of medicines and equipment, even the personnel, we need to actually to expand the hospital. So we, we are really treating people who are, most of them we did the amputation and others we try to treat. In the absence of Samaritan Pass, I don't think there is anybody who can help the situation. With the growing population, there is need for more health facilities, bigger health facilities, and Samaritan Pass has effectively stepped into that role of helping renovate this hospital. And without a facility like this, we would lose a considerable number of patients because the nearest facility we have is Malakal, which is eight hours drive. We just ask for help in any way that we can so that one day these people would be able to go home. They would no longer have to live in these camps and wait in line for hours for water or go and collect their food at a distribution point instead of working in the field and having jobs. So we just continue to pray for support for these people, pray for help and pray for peace.